Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Cosmograph Daytona Reference 116523 in stainless steel and yellow gold with mother-of-pearl dial. You can see and you can purchase this two-tone in-house caliber six-digit reference Rolex Daytona on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right-hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories and Included, high resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this mother of pearl dialed in house caliber two tone Rolex Daytona. Now, on my wrist, six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, you can see that this is the classical fit of a modern solid end link Rolex Daytona. The essential size and shape of the case has been set more or less since the first automatic Daytona bowed in 1988. Since the introduction of solid end links, the watch has been 40 millimeters across the round of the case not inclusive of crowns, pushers, or crown guard. From lug to lug, this is the part influenced by the solid end links, the horns of the end piece of the bracelet. The watch is 50.8 millimeters across the wrist, so it wears well on a smaller wrist like mine, and I happen to know a number of female executives in the company actually wear the Daytona, so I can verify that it wears well on a wrist down to as small as perhaps even 14 centimeters in circumference, and it's nice and slim. Easier to wear under a dress cuff than the rotating bezel sports watches. It's effectively 12 millimeters, 12.2 to be exact, thick, with a generously sloped bezel and domed sapphire to slide underneath the dress cuff. Now, this is an interesting watch because it combines two-tone a treatment most closely associated with the 80s, with Mother of Pearl, a treatment most closely associated with dress watches, but the Daytona is very much a sports watch, perhaps the quintessential land sports Rolex. Of course, any Daytona, because of the name and the history, as well as the tachymetric scale bezel, is evocative of motorsports, and actually this year, 2017, the Taylor Brothers, winners overall at the Rolex 24 Hours of Daytona, received not the traditional steel Cosmograph Daytona, but the two-tone, two-tone and the Taylor Brothers are millennials, is making a comeback among millennials, effectively a fashion statement replacing the white metals and rose gold of the 2000s. Yellow gold with steel is making a comeback, and on this watch, you wonder why it ever went away. The mother of pearl dial is stylish, rich, and creates a unique dynamic showing almost every color of the rainbow as you move it through the light. It's almost like a prism sort of a shape-shifter and color-changing chameleon of a dial. Richness is ensured thanks to the applied yellow gold Arabic numerals indices and yellow gold hands at center. You can also see how the yellow gold chapter rings of the sub-registers nicely contrast with the mother of pearl tones of the dial. Now, in terms of how the bracelet fits and feels, it's very much a solid end link Rolex bracelet, so substantial, meaty, heavy in the hand. I will say one feature that differs a little bit from later examples is that this Z series, so we're talking late 2006, 2007, 2007 being the year for the Z series. It wasn't until the V series, approximately late 2008, early 2009, that we began to see the new style Daytona folding buckle. Functionally, they're exactly the same, right down to the five millimeter Rolex Easy Link tool-free adjustment. But if you're wondering why this watch isn't aesthetically exactly the same as the others, simply because this is a Z-series watch and the later clasp design came with the V-series. Mechanically, it's the in-house caliber 4130, 44 joules, smooth bi-directional winding, a COSC certified Swiss chronometer. It has a full balance bridge for robust anchoring of the balance in the hairspring, and it features a free-sprung architecture that is the balance is adjusted via Rolex's proprietary proprietary microstella system, so bumps, vibrations, and disruptions on the wrist will have less of an impact on precise timing. Now, it also has a Breguet overcoil hairspring, such that positional or gravitationally induced timing deviation is less of a factor in the running of a watch featuring an overcoil. And this watch, not just a land sports watch, but with screw down crown and chronograph pushers, also 100 meter water resistant. So if you do take it down to Daytona Beach to watch the 24 hours, you can cool off in the surf afterwards. Now the watch features a column wheel and vertical clutch tandem, which is to say underneath that screwed in and satin finished case back is a traditional column wheel actuator 
crisp, you can hear it, you can feel it, it's a tactile pleasure to use, more expensive to make, harder to tune, it's the way Rolex does chronographs, but there's also a vertical clutch, so if you watch the seconds hand, it starts without jump, stops without stagger, and always resets precisely to the index of 12. Plus, if you like to run your chronograph continuously, the vertical clutch means there's no additional wear and tear on the movement. With a vertical clutch, you can simply leave the chronograph running. You can see and you can purchase this two-tone steel and yellow gold Mother of Pearl Dial in-house caliber Z-series Rolex Cosmograph Daytona on our website.